episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vincent. I'm an Army veteran. And today we're going to talk about no abortions, pride flags, or transgender care because Republicans use spending bill to block VA policies. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can find more content from Vet Talk only on YouTube. And if you're a veteran who would love to share your stories or resource for veterans and non-veterans who would love to share your resource for veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP so we can schedule a meeting. Now that we gotten out of that the way, again, man, today's topic, we're talking about no abortions, transgender care, because the Republicans use the spending bill to block VA policies. Yes, that's right. They use the spending bill to block VA policies. And why I think this is cool, man, because as a Christian, I am totally for blocking abortions. I'm totally for blocking transgender care. I am totally for it. And I think it's a good thing to block it, even the pride flag. Why? Because I'm a Christian. I'm a conservative. Um, even though, as I always state, I don't follow any particular party, but when I read over what they all are, I have more of a conservative, conservative, um, values. So I consider myself to be a conservative. And I think not only does this protect my kids, but it protects veterans. Because again, as I stated before, I think we have to keep the main thing at the main thing. The main thing is ensuring that veterans, regardless of age, color, or sex, should be taken care of, which should be the most important thing. Anything outside of that that has nothing to do with military service, that has more to do with personal things, I think that should be taken care of on your own money, on time. I don't believe that the VA should be responsible for personal things that are non-military related. I've had somebody say that that has a lot to do with the um, military repealing the don't ask, don't tell policy. Well, for me, I don't think that has anything to do with it because don't ask, don't tell still has nothing to do with veterans in the sense of veterans receiving health care and benefits for veteran things, which are more related to war and time and service. It had nothing to do with, you know, personal things. We have to keep the personal separate from the job. Let's keep the job at the job and the personal at the personal. Because even though the don't ask, don't tell policy existed during my time, we knew of people who were in homosexual relationships. And the don't don't ask, don't tell policy stated that even though we saw it, we couldn't ask, nor could they tell us that they win it. As long as those two things didn't happen, it was okay for them to be in that relationship and nobody bothered them. You know, I had people that I served with that were like that. We didn't bother them. We didn't make fun of them. We didn't question it. We didn't think twice about it. You know, that just, it is what it was. But again, that to me has nothing to do with military service. Even though, yes, they're in the military doing this time and they're doing their thing during their time in the military, it's still not a military-related issues. For me, my understanding of VA benefits are for those who went through something that was caused by their time in service. Your personal relationship, that wasn't caused by your time in service. That was your choice. You chose to be with a man, be, chose to be with a woman. A woman chose to be with a man. A man chose to be with a man, and a woman chose to be with a woman. That's choice. That has nothing to do with military service. So let me get into this article, man. So in the latest move by the Republican to block certain policies at the Department of Veterans Affairs, a spending bill has been introduced that includes provisions banning abortions, pride flag, or transgender care. The bill, known as the Military Construction and Veteran Affairs Appropriation Act is seen as a direct challenge to the Biden administration's effort to expand access to health care for LGBTQ plus veterans. The ban on abortions at VA facilities is not new, as it has been in place since the 1970s. However, the bill will make the ban permanent and would also prohibit VA care providers from even discussing abortions with their patients. 
which is a blessing. This has been met with criticism for pro-choice advocates who argue that veterans should have access to all legal medical procedures. The ban on the pride flag and other symbols of LGBTQ pride is also a controversial provision of the bill. The VA had recently announced that it would allow these symbols to be displayed at VA facilities as a way to show support for the LGBTQ plus veterans. The ban on these symbols have been criticized as discriminatory and harmful to the LGBTQ plus veterans who may feel marginalized and excluded from veteran service, which in my opinion is a lie because again, you're a veteran and they're there to service veterans. It's just, they want more than what the VA is willing to do and that's wrong. But anyways, finally, the ban on transgender care is perhaps the most controversial provision of the bill. The VA had recently announced that it would begin providing gender confirmation surgery to transgender veterans as a part of its commitment to providing comprehensive health care. The ban on this care has been met with outrage from transgender right advocates who argue that denying medical care to transgender individuals is discriminatory and violates their human rights. Overall, the Military Construct and Veteran Affair Appropriation Act represents a significant challenge to the Biden administration efforts to expand access to health care for LGBTQ plus veterans. While the bill is likely to face opposition from Democrats and advocacy groups, it introduced highlights the ongoing political battles over LBGTQ plus rights in the United States. And for me, I think that this battle has to continue. I think that it's time for believers to stand up. It's time to take back our rainbow, which was God's promise to all people in the sense of God creating all men and women. And, and it shouldn't be something that we as Christians should allow to happen. You know, they have to stop. And I and I believe it's time for us to stand up and say, you know what? Enough is enough. Let's take back God's kingdom. Let's stand up for God's kingdom. Let us not fall victim to the lies and you know what I'm saying, the things that are being told because it's just a bunch of foolishness. And I wanted to address something because somebody one day says something about Unix. And I wanted to put it on the screen that Unix were men who, you know, castrated themselves or were castrated because of, you know, their job title back during that time. Um, most would say, you know, this was something that happened in the Old Testament, New Testament. Paul, he was an actual eunuch. And one of the things that people don't understand was this was sometimes a choice and then sometimes it wasn't a choice and it had nothing to do with sexuality so i wanted to put it up here so that those who don't know how to read or don't know what it really means can read it and one of the key highlight things you got to understand they were bedroom guards and it says in the history a eunuch was a man whose job was to guard the bedroom door for a royal woman to protect her these guards were castrated to make themselves less threatening to the women they guarded. Later, some men underwent castration so the high voice would deepen during puberty, and these eunuch singers became famous in opera houses. So this is a history lesson on who and what eunuchs were. I know there are different things um, out there that I'm hearing and I'm reading that people say, and some folks are, you know, um, saying that eunuchs in the Bible were transgender, but that's crazy. And I think that's foolishness because when we go to the Bible and we read what the Bible talks about, in the Bible it says in Leviticus 20 and 13, if a man has sexual relationship with a man as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They are to be put to death and their blood will be on their own heads. So I understand most people say, well, Brother Vince, that was the Old Testament. We don't do things like that no more. Even though 
God wasn't for it then. But still, you know, they like to argue. They like to fuss. They like to try to, you know, say this and that. So here it is. I'm going to show scripture in the New Testament that goes along with Leviticus. I'm not saying that, you know, that scripture means we should go out there and kill them. Because in the Old Testament, yes, God did do that. But now, that's not what we are going to do. That's not what I'm promoting. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just showing you how God was against it then, and he's against it now. Because the Bible says that God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So he doesn't change his stance to suit mankind. One of the craziest things I heard recently, and it never clicked until I heard it, during the time of the flood, during Noah time, when God flooded the earth, do you realize that even kids died during that time? Yes, kids. Because think about it. Noah and his family was saved, and it was eight adults that were saved. But what happened to the kids? What happened to the kids? See, most people don't understand in God. They don't understand that when you when when you're a God as God is the God of the true and living God, he can do pretty much anything that he wants. He don't have to answer to nobody. So for a creation to think that they can tell a creator what to do and how to think, that's absurd and crazy. But again, we know that we live in doing times where people are doing this and they think that they understand it no more than God. For me, I'm afraid of a guy like that. Not in the sense of I fear him in the sense of Oh man, I don't want nothing to do with him. Da da da. No, I fear him in the, in a reverent, respectful way to where I'm gonna do what he say do. I'm a, I'm gonna do what he say do because I don't want this God to be angry at me and destroy me because of something that I couldn't give up. So that's what self denial is all about: dying to one's will, emotions, thoughts, actions, and all these other stuff. That's what I'm doing daily. Is it easy? No. And do I fall? Yes. But that's what His grace is for. But that doesn't give me a license to commit sin. That doesn't give me a license to practice sin. It just has, I have God's grace. So let's go to Romans 1, 26 through 27. It says, for this cause, God gave them up unto their vile affection. For even a woman did change their natural use into that which is against nature. Hmm. What was it? And likewise, also, the men, leaving their natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one towards another. When he said one towards another, he wasn't talking about burning their lust towards women. He was talking about lust one towards another, which is talking about men. And it said men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. So here is clear a clear description. A clear description from a eunuch himself. If I'm correct, Paul wrote Romans. If I'm correct, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But from my assumption, I believe it's Paul that wrote Romans. And here it is, a eunuch is talking about the very thing that I heard somebody say, that's what a eunuch was, a transgender person. So if that's the case, then why would he write this right here? Why would he make this statement? If it was okay for him to be a transgender, which was, a, you know, in most cases, transgenders from what I see, I observe. I'm not saying that there aren't cases out there. I don't know because I'm not in that lifestyle, but I see transgenders, women sleeping with supposed to be straight or gay in my book, men. And right here, Paul clearly goes against that. I mean, by talking about it right here. And you can't say Paul is not accredited because, again, he was a eunuch himself. He said he was. So if anybody would know what a eunuch can and cannot do, which y'all, you know, call Paul, you know, or call eunuchs transgenders, then he would have came out and made a bold statement supporting your claim. But again, because people don't read, they take what you say for the right answer. And in actuality, it's a lie. It's a lie. But the scripture right here, I'm giving you the scripture so you can go and study to show thyself approved. Timothy told you that, you know what I'm saying? So go do it. And then we're going to finish out, you know what I'm saying? with well, one more scripture, because I want to go ahead and, you know, close the mouth of all these people out there that are saying whatever they're saying, because it's foolishness, man. And this is why. 
because the Bible addressed what was going to happen in the last days, man. It says that in 1 Timothy 1, 9 through 11, and we know that the law is not made for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers, rebels, and the ungodly, and sinful, the unholy, and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for the sexual immorale, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine that conforms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed Lord, which he entrusted to me. So, again, I understand why people out there doing what they do. I understand why this government in this world is pushing for abortions. I understand why they're pushing for, you know, um, you know, for all of these things that are being promoted out there in our society. You know what I'm saying? Um, one of the um six, seven things that God had was hands that shed innocent blood. That goes against abortion. You know, the Bible also talks about in Psalms that children are heritage of the Lord. So people can't say, well, this child ain't meant to be here. That child ain't meant to be here because of this situation, that situation. I beg to differ because, again, children are a heritage of the Lord, which means they're here because of God. Is God okay with people doing and committing the acts that they commit in, in a negative light for these things to happen? No. But at the same time, you can't say that that kid ain't meant to be here. I'm a testament of that because one of my little quick stories before we close this thing, I remember when I was young, dumb, out there wilding, and I used to be out there trying to get the girls that I was dating or just with pregnant. And it could not happen. I mean, I was out there trying. I mean, trying. Me and them talking. We trying to make this thing happen. But guess what? When it was time for my son to be here, the woman who's my wife now, she got pregnant. And am I to say because in my mind, that's not something I want. My child is not a blessing that he shouldn't be here. That would be ludicrous. And I didn't think that way. And I don't think that way. My child is a blessing. My child is a blessing. And I know somebody may be saying, well, Brother Vince, that's not right. What that got to do with rape? What that got to do with this, that, and the third? It has nothing to do with that. But what I am stating and what I'm saying and what I'm standing on is children are heritage of the Lord. So that means God want them here. So for anybody to say that a kid is trash, they shouldn't be here and think that it's okay to murder an unborn child, you're ludicrous. You're ludicrous. You're crazy. And I know somebody may say, well, Brother Vince, you just said early that God killed kids. Yeah, but he's God. He can do whatever he want. But that doesn't take away from the fact that we as people have laws and written laws and rules that God give us. Because why? He's the creator. And I understand why you don't understand that because you don't want authority. So anytime an authority tell you to do something, you're like the people who always say, well, you can't tell me to do this because you ain't doing that and da, 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 da. That's a parent issue. You took an issue with your parents, so now you want to argue and fight and claw your way into doing whatever it is that you want. That's fine. Do what you want. Am I soliciting it? No. Because I know what the word says. It says, for the way to sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Do you want to experience eternal life? If you don't, then yes, there is a fiery, burning hell waiting for the children of disobedience. And I'm not saying it's just for you. It can be for me too. If I choose not to live righteous and do what God say do, then that same fiery hell I'm telling you about, I'll go to too. I'm not excluded. But what, ex what excludes me is I chose to deny myself, pick up my cross and follow Jesus. I chose to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that he is Lord. Do I make all the right decisions all the time and do all the right things? No, but I got to advocate with the father. I got to advocate with the Father, which helps me to be holy as he is holy. The Bible says that none are righteous, no, not one. So I'm not making myself seem better than you or as if I done something to make myself greater than you. No, I'm not perfect, but I serve the perfect one. So I'm able to say greater is he that is in me than he that is of this world. 
That's what I did. I made a choice. And the Bible says you have to choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. So it's a choice. You have a choice to be out there. You have a choice. You're making a choice to go to hell if you don't listen to what I'm saying, if you don't heed to the warning. You're making a choice. Just like I made a choice to live for Christ and live righteously, you're making a choice to live like a hellion and do what you want. That's your choice. So you got to choose. What does this have to do with veterans? It has a lot to do with veterans. because. Veterans need to know this. I know a lot of veterans decided they don't believe no more and all these other things, man, but don't let hurt, don't let your past, don't let whatever, whoever caused you to be church hurt to cause you to go to hell because in order for you to be forgiven for your sins, you have to forgive. And if you're not willing to forgive, you can't be with God. So this has been another episode with your boy, Brother Vince Vet Talk. As always, Vet Talk out.